you see it around the New Heart, of course, and you know, if you go back a few years, if you will recall, Steve Allen show, the Everyman series, when he would come on and Steve Allen would say, what is your name? And you would roll your eyes, and you know, every time I see your character of George on New Heart, I, I'm expecting you, Tom, to roll your eyes. Can you still do that? Well, I didn't. It was, it was a wink that got stuck, really. I, I would say something off the wall to Steve and wink, you know, and then the, <laughs> the wink wouldn't come loose. So. Well, we were trying to remember yeah. what, what you said. What was your name? When he'd say, what is your name? Oh, what did you say? I don't remember. That's funny. I don't either. <laughs> now, I never had a name on the show, but years later, Marshall Brickman gave me a name, which I thought was perfect for that character, who, who could never think of his name, because Steve would startle him in, in so each time, and his name was I.Q. Low. So I always thought that was a perfect name for that guy. He had several names from time to time. One was, my favorite was Ed Sullivan. Steve and Ed were in direct competition with each other, and they were just like this, they were fighting it out for the top rating. And uh, one time Steve said, the next man on the street, what is your name, sir? I said, Ed Sullivan? <laughs> just to make Steve laugh. He thought you know, funny. you make me laugh, and Bob Newhart makes me laugh. Can you make Bob Newhart laugh? Oh, he's a great laugher. Oh, Bob is a great laugher. He loves to laugh. And he's and when he gets giddy on the, on the set, oh, oh he la he'll laugh. He'll laugh through anything. Did you get this part because you were in the uh, initial Bob Newhart show? Uh, n no. Uh, yes and no. It had nothing to do. Bob did not uh, say that he wanted me for this. Uh, he, he didn't say that he didn't want me, so that's how I really got it. He could have said no, but I don't, I don't, he, he, I don't think he would say no. But, uh, no, I auditioned for it, just like folks. But, I mean, he knew your, you know, your background and what you're capable of doing, so oh, he was delighted. Yeah. Edge. yeah, yeah, he was delighted. Yeah, he was really happy. Tom, why is the inn such a mess? Because you're the caretaker and you're supposed to be keeping everything up to snuff. Why is mess. it falling down? Let me put it this way. We, our family has been taking care of this place since it was built, right? Mm -hmm. Well, how much do you think it cost to build that in the first Today? place? Oh. Then what's, what was the year it was built? 1773, 4, 5, around well, in there. Well, it probably cost uh, $5,000 then. Oh, more like 500 Oh, probably. really? Well, you know, you could buy all the lumber you needed for $8 in those days. Yeah. So that's the original cost was say between five hundred and five thousand dollars. Well, you couldn't buy that thing now for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. I think we've done a heck of a job of keeping it up, don't you? Yeah, you really have. We've made a great improvement on that property. Uh, Tom, when Steve Allen left New York and came out to LA, you didn't go with him. Why? I had a daughter in New York that I wanted to be with because I knew that, that she, her mother wasn't going to move away from New York, so I wanted to be with her. I had uh, a Broadway show that I was starring in. I had to tell the truth that I was appearing on every week. And I had my own television show called Split Personality. It didn't last very long. Neither did the Broadway play, <laughs> but uh, were, those were things that would have kept Steve there. If, yeah. he'd been, if he'd been engaged to do those things, he would have been unable to move. But uh, I wanted to be where my daughter was. When people asked you as a kid, what are you going to be when you grow up? What did you tell them? Uh, a lawyer, drummer, or a fighter. Prize fighter. Prize fighter. And you weighed, you weren't all that big. Like no, no. 60 pounds yeah. or something? Yes. With luck, I could have been fighting wimps like Sugar Ray Robinson, Jake LaMotta. Oh. Just the but you actually did fight. You actually did fight. Well, but I never got out of the amateur ranks. I never got. A, I, I was always well. D various things happened, but I was. Uh, I was always uh, an amateur. I never even got. You know, I never got. I don't. I don't know of the guys that ever beat me. I don't. I never heard of any of them again. Well, there was one one guy, but oh. I never heard of him again. And he was. Gee, he was tough. Can you imagine me in the ring with Gene Fulmer. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm so glad Carmen you Carmen Basilio. I'm so glad you didn't go there. Uh, it's so awful to have people smashing other people in the face. Uh. Well, it's all right if you're doing the smashing, I guess, but <laughs> gee, you, me, how are you going to avoid getting smashed by people <laughs> like Sugar Ray Robinson? God. Well, let's set up a little scene right now uh, where, where George is applying to be a big brother. Would you tell us what happens in this scene, George? Oh, uh, well, <laughs> uh, I don't know what took him so long, but he finally finds out that there is an organization called it's, it's, I forget what it's actually called in the script, but it's like the Big Brother. It's where an older man uh, takes a, a young boy who has no father and, uh, and, you know, goes out with him and fishes and hunts and, and uh, goes to the Y or, or Little League or plays softball or football or something like that. And uh, George is applying to be a Big Brother at, at one of these uh, institutions like that. Okay, let's watch. Hey, Dick, Joanna, could you give me a hand here? I need someone to check this application. The Vermont Family Support League. You're applying to be like a big brother? George, that's terrific. Well, it's the least I could do for a kid that needs a buddy. I figure I can take him hiking or fishing to a ball game, back from a ball game, too. <laughs> <coughs> well, let's, uh, let's take a look. Name, George Utley. Occupation head of guest relations. <laughs> Stratford Inns of America. You were honored by the Society for Semi-Aquatic Animals? Yeah, you remember last year when they roasted me down at the Beaver Lodge? You know, I like the way, Tom, that your character is gelling after these four seasons. Were you that confident going into it, knowing where you were going to take the character? Uh, the character was clearly, fairly clearly defined in the pilot. It was only uh, afterwards that it began to get a little, a little shaky uh, because they didn't, I don't think they wanted to feature it as much as it had been featured in the pilot. It was outstandingly strong in the pilot as a, as a uh, goof up, but they didn't want the goof up after we, after we started doing the show. They didn't want him to be so totally inept, and they thought it would be kind of jokey and, and hokey. So, uh, so they pulled way back on that, and then it took a long time for George to, to come through. And well, I like the way the people are gelling. The I little relationship too. with yeah. Peter Scolari and Julia Duffy is just darling. And Daryl and uh, Larry and Daryl and his brother Daryl. It's, well, New Hart's done it again, with your help. Oh, it's great. And Mary Fran. Mm -hmm. And Mary Fran, yeah. Gosh, I, I just, I look forward to, I'm going to do a, a show Monday. I haven't read it yet, but I understand George finds a long-lost cousin who, who may or may not turn out to be a very bad guy. I'm anxious to read it and see what it is. Oh, very good. Tom Boston, George Thank of you. the New Heart Show. Many, many more successful seasons. Thank you. Can I help you with your microphone? You certainly can. Oh, he, does very, he does very good work. Thank you very much, George. <laughs> Bye. Stay tuned. Ted Alum Morning continues. That's Ted Alum Strong. <laughs>